right. We'll start in seated good space pose, Sukhasana. Just take a moment to change the crossing of the legs to the less dominant or favored crossing. And then pulling the flesh out from underneath the sitting bones, kind of from the inner thigh out toward the outer hip and buttock. It's kind of a diagonal movement. And then be on the mid shins with the crossing and try to create more balance in the legs. And also notice the sitting bones, try to find your way right on top of the sitting bones so that you're balancing from the front to the back of so the sitting bones right in the center. But also noticing if there's any difference between the left and right. And just trying to bring more evenness to the base of this pose. And using the support of the floor, or your own body to help you adjust your shoulders to move into alignment with your hips, your skull into alignment with your spine, your chin, just simply in a neutral tilt. So not down or up, just level with the floor. And with the hands still down, just taking some time to lift and spread across the chest. To lengthen through the top of the head without feeling lighter in the base of the pose. And then try to maintain as much of that as you can as you join your hands together in front of the heart. Closing the eyes and turning your gaze away from your brain. Starting to arrive into the, the witness seat. We'll attempt to just remain in this witness state throughout our practice. Not trying to place any agenda, not trying to stretch, just inviting openness and spaciousness. Letting the brain observe the physical experience, uh, the mind experience, the breath experience. Today, we're gonna just be all about support. Rather than striving for our poses, we're gonna ask the props to really meet us where we are. Just bringing some attention to your groins and your hips and see if you can tap into the weight of your femur bones, which are the heaviest bones in your body. Those long thigh bones, just let them descend from the roots of the groins out through the knees. And just notice what happens when you create more support in this good space pose. The byproduct is the good space. Taking a few moments to soften the abdomen, allowing the breath to flow with ease. Keep your chest lifted and spread as you bow towards your heart and exhalation. Release your hands and on an in breath, lift your head. Your eyes gently open. Welcome. So we're going to start with one of my favorite opening poses, which is Supta Vada Konasana. Supta reclining Vada Bound, Kona Ego Asana pose. And you can set up with all that lovely support underneath you. So if you have a bolster, you can work with that to support the chest and head. If your hips felt tight in Sukhasana, you're going to find soft supports or blocks if you don't have lots of blankets to support your hips. And then we're going to support the bound angle with the strap. And you may also recognize that you need a little elevation under your head. You're just going to take some time to build this pose to really meet you where you are. And the idea is not that we always work with props, but that we use props long enough that the body is 
trained to these wise actions and to the sensation that we're really going towards. And then we wean the props off when the body is ready. So you're going to be really generous with your support today. Again, the idea is not to have a workout, it's not to stretch and elongate, it's to create an advice space in the body, which the props will help you do. So you do want to draw your buttocks away from the end of the torso prop, whatever it is, maybe it's a rolled blanket, maybe it's a bolster and have the bolster or whatever you're working with starting at the back ribs. The feet will come together and you're going to belt around the hips. I know um, sometimes we forget this, this prop, it can be a little complicated, but it goes around your hips. It passes over the inner thighs. It passes over the inner ankles and then you tuck the loop under your toes under your outer feet and then you tighten it off to whatever degree you can. So the idea here is once you've set this up, you can become completely passive. So if you find that you're gripping or holding anywhere, modify with a prop, add something to fill the space so you're not holding yourself. You want to feel cradled. And when you have all that support, then the good space comes just like in Sukhasana. So be on the backs of your hands, maybe take a moment to move the shoulder blades toward the chest. Sense the shoulders really tempted to drape around the contour of your torso prop. There might be some resistance as we know that body sometimes has to wait out reflexes of contraction. So just imagine these poses like you're moving through layers of an onion. Every exhale, a chance to surrender a bit more. And notice how your breath shows up. Each pose has its own signature on the breath. This is a very open diaphragm pose. You might notice a more spacious in breath, maybe a longer in breath. You might notice your exhale is a bit more passive. If your eyes are closed, just keep looking away from the brain toward your cheeks. Really check out all the body parts. Sometimes we forget about the face, which is, it's kind of sometimes becomes a mask that we wear socially. And so let the face soften. Dissolve tension from the forehead to the chin. Let the cheekbones sit back towards the back of the skull. Let the eyes rest in their sockets. We'll be here about another minute, just sinking in a little deeper. Connecting with the breath, arriving into a more present state of mind by watching ourselves here. No agenda, just observation and allowance. I'm reminded of an interview I heard of a rapper, DJ Khaled, and he was talking about how he owns so many pillows because he, he needs to rest his greatness. <laughs> so just imagine these poses today, you're resting your greatness. We're going to find a way to release the feet. So some of you might be loosening the belt. Some of you might be slipping out one of your feet to get a little more looseness. And then find a way to step your feet wide and angle the knees in together. 
to release the grind, the hips. So take a few moments in a counter pose. We always want to come out of our poses as carefully as we come into them. And then you can begin to move your strap off of you and roll to your side. We're going to be coming into some seated poses, working with the chair for head support. So all you need is a simple chair that has some sort of an edge where you're going to rest your head. And you can sit on a blanket, which will give your back some support. We want to do away with any ideas of striving. This is not forward bending week where we kind of strive. In those forward bends, we're going to be resting, creating an opportunity for the body to open in its own time. So the chair will go in front of you. And we'll be starting in Upavishta Konasana with the wide angle forward bend. And you might add a blanket to your chair so that when you bring the head down, you have a little more comfort. You're going to be sitting on the edge of the blanket. And you can sit on the corner. As you know, that can be a little more helpful with Upavishta Konasana. But you will be working in some seated poses today where we're going to sit on the edge. So if you prefer, you can just start on the edge so you don't have to make a lot of adjustments. You start your pose with your legs wide. You're going to do your best to anchor into your legs and try to find rotation in the hips that's neutral, which means your toes are going to be above your heels. The chair can come as close to you as you need. You can always push it away as you start to open more. And you'll find a way to rest your head. So that could be directly on the chair. It could be stacking your forearms. It could be prayer hands to the forehead. If you want to prop up the elbows, we all have different degrees of openness that we have to work with. So we're going to honor really where you are. So keeping the legs with the dial slightly turned up, not your fullest, deepest anchoring of your legs, but enough pressure into the legs that you keep your consciousness pricked. We don't want to go into a dull, sleepy state here. That's never the idea. So if you're not feeling present, something has to change. Also attempt to keep the back somewhat flat, not a complete rounded spine. And as you start to open in the body, you'll have to adjust your chair so that you can keep tracking with your physical edge. Remember in forward bends, the pelvis has to tilt forward. This will help support your back from kind of overdoing forward extension in the lumbar. And in your mind's eye, just place yourself in a little boat. And each breath is a tiny wave under the boat. So you're just kind of sensing the breaths in real time. This is good stress. Restorative yoga is a lot about good stress on bone and joints, really good stress here for hip joints. If you want to bring a little more effort or turn up the dial a little more with the legs, you can draw your femur bones into the hip sockets by pulling the heels toward the hip slightly. And plunging those long femur heads into the hip socket. We're going to take the pose to each side now. So on an in-breath, just start to rise up to a, a vertical spine. We're going to open the right side body by taking the chair 
over the left leg. When you come into Parjva Uddhavista Konasana, which is the sideways version of the pose, you're attempting to align your breastbone with your left leg here. So you might grab the chair and just help yourself revolve your torso to the left as well as you can until you see the sternum and the left thigh pretty much lined up. And then just kind of come forward and find that starting position, which might be different than your centered position. You might have to elevate a bit more. It might be the same. So just customize it to the needful in your body. And notice how you have to be a little more attentive to your right leg here. Your right leg is helping anchor you, giving you something to revolve away from. Without that anchor, we don't have as much stability or support. So the leg action is continuous as is the revolving action. But then locate the places in your body that are passive and quiet and still. And make sure when you get that signal to track a little deeper, go with it, come in a little deeper, but not because of the ego, not because of the will, just because you have the instinct in your body. The right side body is getting a big invitation to open here. So just imagine a few breaths sweeping through that right flank. The spaciousness that might be developing there. Now we're going to gently lift our heads enough that we can transition to place the chair above the right leg. As you transition, try to kind of protect this cumulatively building some quietness in the brain. So just kind of try not to rattle the brain or body more than is necessary as you transition. Again, you're gonna use the chair to help you revolve a little bit deeper, to bring that chest into closer alignment. It might not be perfect, but get it to where you can, anchor into your left leg, and then come forward enough that you can rest the head, quiet the brain. Every time you exhale, you can coax that twist just slightly, just encourage the spine to more deeply rotate. Think about a wet dish rag, you're wringing it out, very supple, very juicy. Not forcing anything, just going with it, using that out breath to revolve a bit deeper. And now, once again, you're going to inhale to help yourself up and out of a twist. We'll revisit the centered up position just to see if we found a little more depth <clears throat> after rotating the spine, which usually we do. But again, we don't have an agenda. We're just seeing about it. So coming forward from your legs, once you've centered the chair, tilt the pelvis forward, bring the head to its perfect level. Try to keep your back a little longer. Don't let it slump around. Keep the pelvic tilt pretty strong, the legs pretty strong.
And now on an in-breath, slowly come up. And you can join your legs, slide them under the chair. Just take a moment to feel your dandas in the legs after that upavishta, that big wide open leg position. And we're gonna come into Janusha Chasana. So take your eight fingers to the inner right knee. And when you pull there, you soften up that cord, that ligament, you're gonna help move the heel up to the upper inner thigh. And then you'll probably need to prop the right knee somehow, a block, a bolster, a blanket, anything that fills the gap and lets your leg become passively heavy. And then take your fingertips to the floor. Your chair should be centered up over the left leg again. And again, turning your chest to point to the left. You're gonna find your starting position for the rested forehead, whether it's on your thumbs, on your forearms, on your chair directly, on a prop. And again, you're gonna stay active and anchored into your right leg. You're gonna stay active with the torso continuing to revolve to the left. And you're also gonna find the quiet places in the pose. Go a little deeper if you can. We'll stay here another half a minute. Notice the right lower back starting to elongate, to open, to surrender. It's not a stretch, it's different. Letting go of kind of default holding in the body. On an in-breath, lengthen your way upright. You can stand that right knee up, extend the leg. We'll be transitioning to the other side. So you can again, take your eight fingers and lift up on the inner knee to soften, to help close the knee, to help bring the heel into the upper inner thigh. Crop your left knee if needed. If it's higher than the hip, you wanna crop. Align your chair above your right leg. And then use your fingertips on the floor to help you turn, turn yourself to the right. Bring some purpose, some, some connection, some anchoring into your left leg. And then on an exhale, find that first edge where the forehead is supported. giving the next several breaths over to the lower left back. And now inhale and lift up and recenter your chair. 
Now we did reclining bound angle when we started. We're going to do a seated bound angle. You don't have to put a belt on. Just join your feet and then take care of any needs you have with supporting your legs. So if your legs aren't heavy and descending, if they're kind of gripping in the groins of the hips, take some props all the way up to where your thighs meet the floor so you feel truly cradled. We're gonna be resting the head again here. So we're gonna have a nice deep kind of plunging into the hips, mining the hips. So be on the sitting bones. And as you come forward, don't roll off your sitting bones. So that's one way we can stay connected with the floor. We're not trying to do a somersault. And then you have to bring your hands to meet you rather than have your head meet something, have something meet your head. So think about it kind of in an inverted way. And again, attempt to keep your back longer rather than more rounded. If you can go deeper, maybe it's a better choice to not go deeper so that you can really stay anchored in your legs. You can stay really deeply plunging into the hips. And that good space will come from that work of supporting yourself. Notice where you're feeling a little sticky or stuck. Bring attention, bring breath. You might break through that little layer of resistance in your body. Now you're going to inhale, help yourself back up. And we can start to move the chair aside. We're going to be working without the chair now. Move it aside. We will use it towards the end of this class. You can kind of clear everything off of your mat. And we're going to be coming onto our left hip. We will do some weight bearing on the left arm. It'll be kind of like a kickstand. So if your wrist doesn't like that, you can be on the knuckles or the fist. You could also come on your forearm if you really need to not put weight down on the wrist. But you're going to bend your knees, have them kind of passively off to the right. Your left hip is really in good contact with the floor. And that's something, instead of avoiding it, uh, see if you can start to really kind of surrender to that weight. It'll be a good. Um, connective tissue release for your left hip area. A lot of us have a very glued up outer hip because of certain activities. So then you're gonna slide your hand out at an angle and enough that you're able to kind of hammock or kind of make a convex shape with your left side ribs. So you wanna really kind of go as deep as you can to get a lot of good kind of weight hanging into the left side ribs. Then let your head kind of fall off to the right. You might need your right hand for a little support so you don't feel like you can't use it. Use it on the floor if you need some support. And we're just gonna let gravity take over here. Try to let that hip in contact with the floor really get a little massage from the floor. And every time you inhale, just yawning open the left side body space, the intercostals starting to become more elastic. Every time you exhale, maybe sinking a little more weight into that left side body. And there's some effort required to kind of hold yourself here, but see if you can start to tap into the side of the pose where you're effortless, you're observant, you're passive, you're surrendered.
We're going to take this into a, a twist now. So you're going to bring the right hand to the floor and you're going to help yourself come a little bit more upright first and use your hands and kind of leverage your hands to help you really turn as well as you can to the left. And then you can start to walk the hands a little lower to angle the torso a little bit more over the floor. We want to have a lot of weight in our arms, a third of your body weight. So really pressurize your hands. Keep gently coaxing the twist with the exhalation. Let your head softly fall toward the floor like a big heavy bowling ball dangling from the spine. You might get a, a little inner cue that you're able to take your hands farther to the left. So just listen to that and abide by that if you need to go deeper. Just notice where there's still resistance. Maybe it's still that hip against the floor. Maybe it's somewhere else. Maybe the right lower back is almost ready to open, but it's not quite there. Give it some breath, give it some attention. Let's do three more breaths here. You can keep working the hands counterclockwise if you're able to go deeper. And as we leave the pose, really try to keep good pressure in the hands, a lot of weight down on the floor. You're going to inhale to kind of unwind your torso, keeping the hands heavy, inching your way back until you inhale yourself all the way up. And then we'll switch the legs over to face the left and we'll be putting our right hip in contact with the floor. The legs just kind of passively off to the left, not any specific position there. You're gonna extend the right arm off the line of your right hip, find an angle that allows you to put a lot of weight down. So it's usually kind of a significant angle. You wanna really feel the right side body in a convex way. It's really crescent shaped toward the floor, head resting against your shoulder, left hand there propping you up if you need more support. And we can just take care of our poses right away by finding where we meet the floor and making that a good connection. So start with that heavy hip. Try to surrender to that pressure rather than resist it. Connect with your breath, helping the right side body elongate. Make sure your head is fully relaxed. You're not babying the weight of the head. You're not holding it with your neck. Use your shoulder. And again, even though we have to use some effort here to hold ourselves in this position, see if you can tap into the areas of your body that really don't need to work. Watch the breath flow in and flow out. Feeling a nice opening from the armpit to the hip crest. Meanwhile, left-sided kidney gets a nice little organ massage or compression. Great way to detox the organ. We'll kind of keep a lot of this shape very similar, but we're going to start to bring our torsos kind of back up so that we can use our hands, our fingertips to help us turn really, really well to the right. You're going to take that rotation kind of to your, your peak and then begin to crawl the hands forward again, and angle the trunk over the floor, put a lot of pressure down into your hands. 
It's good weight bearing for the long arm bones. Plunging those long arm bones up to the shoulders, taking the chest toward the floor. Every time you exhale, again, wringing out that washcloth, kind of squeezing a little bit more. And just let your head fall. Don't hold with the neck. Let your head just passively fall toward the floor. Every time you breathe in, lengthen from the tailbone out through the crown of your head. If there's any resistance in your legs, do what you can to find more surrendered legs, just like supine twists that we do all the time. The legs are really the ticket into the depth of the spine. So if you can drop into your legs, create that density, that heaviness, that passivity, the spine will start to rotate more deeply, more willingly. Move the hands around. If you're able to go deeper, we'll stay another half a minute. You're going to use an in breath and you're going to really keep the hands weighted as you crawl back around and unwind your spine from all that twist all the way up. <clears throat> all right, beautiful. We're gonna do a little bit of a, a back bend with our blocks. So two blocks, hopefully you have it. It's okay if you don't, you can modify with something else for the head, but we want head support here. If you have one block, you're gonna to wanna to use it to support behind the shoulder blades. And then we're gonna have our legs just kind of in a passive Shavasana position. So you're gonna put your two blocks down. You can play with the height of the blocks, but um, just assume kind of that you'll start pretty minimally. So lower the medium height of the blocks. And then you'll try to recline back. I like to use my thumbs here on my block to help me kind of position it as I recline back. And I'm trying to hit the kind of the scapula area, the shoulder blade right behind the sternum. And then I want my head supported. I don't want it dumping down. I definitely don't want my forehead higher or lower than my chin. So make adjustments with that head block. So you have the chin tilted toward the chest rather than away from the chest. And then if you can, you'll stretch your arms overhead. and You'll either extend your arms so they're parallel or you'll grab your elbows. Keep the chin toward the chest and the chest lifting. The legs passive. Your feet should be at least hip distance wide, probably wider. Your feet flopping out from the big toe side toward the small toe side. And again, you shouldn't have to do a lot of effort here once you've set it up. You might close your eyes and look toward your cheeks. When we're in back bends, our energy usually flies up. So you can equalize that a little bit by looking down, pointing the gaze down, keeping your chin tilted down. And just like that hip on the floor in the earlier pose, you might have some resistance with that block across your back. So see if you can start to really merge with that block, let your back body really meet that block with its full weight. And notice how when you relax into that block, your exhale helps your shoulder blades move in. Your inhale helps your chest to float up. Good things happen when we surrender into the support. If you are crossing your arms and grabbing elbows, just take a moment to swap out the crossing so we're always kind of creating more balance with these habits we have in our bodies.
Just take the next three exhales and sink a bit deeper. If there's some pain where you're meeting the block, usually it's a sign that we have connected tissue issues. So it's actually good to kind of yield to that higher level of sensation, get a little massage to the tissue. Pain in the tissue is a sign that we need more fascia release. So do your best to kind of embrace that high level of sensation. Exhale with it. We're gonna come out of the pose now. So begin to move your arms back down. Begin to step your feet to the floor and then try to give yourself support as you roll off to the side. It's kind of a big transition there off the, the height of the blocks. And now we're gonna come onto our back. So you, you may want to have a little prop for your head, <clears throat> like a blanket. just so that we keep our forehead and chin level. We don't want to have, again, the chin poking up and the forehead tilting down. So we're going to do a little bit of hip work. I shouldn't say work. It's not a restorative yoga word. A little bit of hip opening. And so cross your right ankle over your left thigh. And for some of us, this is all we need to do, and we're getting a nice amount of sensation. So I'll just kind of talk you through adding sensation if you're kind of underwhelmed here. You can extend your right arm and just give a little pressure to the inner right knee to build off of that. You can add a little more pressure with each exhale. So you're kind of pressing and releasing with each breath. If it's still underwhelming, you're going to pick up your left leg and take your hands behind your left thigh or over your left shin but don't hold any effort in your left leg. You want it passive, you want the calf muscle dropping toward the thigh or the hands. And here you might include the elbow now, pressing into the inner right knee. And each time you exhale, tip your chin into your chest a bit more. So you're gonna notice resistance in that right hip and really make it your objective today to find passivity, a surrendered hip space, to move through some of those onion layers of resistance. You might squeeze a little bit on the exhale or press, depending on what you're doing. You might not. So you're abiding by your own needs to bring some sort of an opening, some sort of a spaciousness and some sort of a release to your right hip. If you have the leg elevated, you're going to exhale and just let your left foot come back to the floor. Extend your right leg directly up. And just imagine you're holding the ceiling back with the sole of the right foot. So fully extend the right leg, firm the leg, and straighten the leg as much as you can and press up through the heel. This will help your knee realign if it did get a little bit rotated there. And then go ahead and step down. And we'll cross the left ankle to the right side. And just start with the very mildest and just see what you need because each side is different. So again, just start with the propped ankle, maybe add the extension of your left hand to touch the inner knee, maybe add more pressure with the exhales, maybe start to pick up the right foot and take hold of the thigh or shin. Maybe use the left elbow, to keep adding a little resistance to that inner knee. And maybe also working with each exhale to kind of squeeze the legs toward you and the chin toward your chest.
And both hips have a story here. It's not just the left hip, your right hip might also be resistant. So just bringing awareness to both hip spaces. Each exhale, a chance to move through a layer of the onion. The shoulders are peeling off the floor. Just bring some weight back to your shoulders. Let them descend back toward the floor. And just five more exhales here. We'll go ahead and rest the foot. If you had it lifted, extend the left leg straight up. Try to straighten it fully. Reach up through the heel, pull the toes toward you. Try to yawn open the back of the left knee. Squeeze the thigh muscle nice, nice and tightly. And then step down. And you're gonna grab one of your blocks and your strap. We're gonna do a supported hand to big toe pose the Parjba version, which means we're taking it out to the side, away from the body. So to kind of kill the momentum of the leg moving off to the side so that we don't go with it, we're gonna be propping the left, kind of the outer buttock with the block. And it's kind of angled in, so it's not directly adjacent to the body, it's angled in. So it's really gonna catch you right at the outer hip and buttock. You might need to move it farther down the thigh. It depends on kind of your, your feeling of openness today. And you're going to open your strap from the Baddha Konasana strap that's probably still there. So a big open strap. And take hold of your left foot. We're just starting with the left because I have that side facing you guys right now. So. So just take your strap over the arch of the foot right behind the, um, right in front of the heel. Because today we're in restorative, we're gonna be more interested in bone and joint than in muscle stretching. So when we take hold right behind the heel, we're, we're really getting, giving feedback to the body that this is more about bone and joint. So you wrap your left hand, wrap your knuckles once and slide down your strap until your elbow hits the floor. And then straighten your right leg. And you're just gonna let that left leg open out to the side, but hopefully the block has stopped you from going very far. So the idea today is not to get your biggest, widest, deepest. It's support and what the support can do for you. Extend your right arm out to the side. And notice how this pose is different when we amplify the amount of support. There's less effort in equalizing the weightedness of the sides of the body. And so the pose might have a different story when we work this way. There is a tendency to have the foot sickle. So just make sure you're streaming energy out through the inner foot, the inner left foot. Keep your chin hugging toward your chest. And if your eyes are closed again, just invite the gaze toward the cheeks. Keep the mind a little more settled. And now you're gonna carry this leg back to center. You're gonna transfer your block so that it's now going to support the inner left leg somewhere over to the right. We're gonna come into the, the twisting Padangustasana. So you're stacking your left hip above your right hip. 
You're bringing your left leg all the way to the right and you're going to prop anywhere from the foot all the way up the leg. You have to kind of retrofit it wherever it goes so that the leg has utmost support. And then you can unfold left arm out to the side. You can encourage left shoulder to find more weight. The left side ribs to descend toward the floor. Maybe the head to roll to the left. Make your bottom leg passive. In a different class, we might be more effortful there, but just make it passive. And remember, if the legs can really become surrendered, the spine will become very, very content in this twist. Notice where the breath is trying to push into. Our breath has well-worn pathways in the body. It also has new channels, new openings. And notice where the breath might be pushing into a new area of the body, trying to form a new pathway. We're gonna to start to transition out. So I would recommend bending your left knee stepping the left foot to the floor and then using your feet to help you slide your hips back to center. And we'll be setting up the left side, which I mean, I meant to say the right side. <clears throat> so you're gonna prop the right outer hip, maybe angling that block kind of in toward the body and take hold of the left arch of your foot. I meant to say right, that's really bad habit. <clears throat> um, toward the heel. So we want to be toward the heel. Wrap the hand and then slide down the strap until your elbow meets the floor. So you have really nice rounded shoulders. Extend your left leg and on an exhale, drop that right leg out to the side. It should feel very supported. If it isn't, you're gonna to have to adjust your block somehow to create that support. You can also use a bolster. If that's something you have at home. This pose is very different when we do it passively. When we're more active, we tend to actually grip in the inner groins. Sometimes we overwhelm the hip to the point that it freezes rather than becomes more open, less resistant. Resting your greatness here. We're going to transition now gently to move that right leg all the way to the left, crossing the body. You're going to want to prop that right foot with your block or whatever prop you're using so that you have full support. You're going to have to slide left hip under you, right hip above. You can hold your strap now with your left hand. The right arm unfolds out to the side. The shoulder bothers you there. Drape the hand over the side waist. Make your bottom leg passive and let each passing breath encourage more depth in your legs, more weightedness, surrender, and more ease in the spinal twist. Come out of it, start to bend your right knee. You can step your left foot to the floor and you can help your strap come off. We're gonna do a very short pranayama today. So I'm not gonna have you set up the whole blanket system. So just have enough support for your head and maybe whatever you're gonna need for Shavasana so you're warm enough, maybe a blanket over you or an eye pillow. 
We'll be working with exhalation. And we're going to use an image today. So most of us have had the experience of riding on a gondola or a chairlift or ski lift. So this is working with veloma, which means we're interrupting, we're going to interrupt the exhale today. So the image is going to be that you're riding up the ski lift, one sweeping, steady, smooth in breath. The exhale is that you didn't get off at the top of the hill, you're riding it back down the hill and you're going to have that chairlift stop twice, which means there's going to be three segments of out breath. And when that chairlift stops, you're not, um, you're not gripping. It's just a very short, brief cessation of the outflow of breath. So you're just interrupting it briefly and you have to control the duration of that. It's not something I can instruct. So it might be just a beat or a quick pause. It might be more substantial than that. So just make sure that you're comfortably reclining here. You're unfolding the arms. You're in your Shavasana position. You're not touching your things with your feet or your hands. Your glasses are off if you wear them. Your eyes are covered if you need that. And just begin by observing your normal breathing without applying any restraints. Pranayama translates as energy restraint. So you're just observing the breath. And then you're going to kind of self guide and I don't want you to try these cycles back to back to back. So I definitely want you to break it up with a full easy in breath out breath. We're going to make three attempts on these broken exhalations. So you have to break them up with easy breathing. But when you're ready, you're going to start with a nice slow steady inhale one smooth breath when you get to the top of the inhale. You have three segments two pauses, so you have to kind of budget the breath to break it apart evenly. Pause, exhale, pause, finish the exhale. You're back into easy breathing. And that image is take it or leave it. So if it's not working for you, just kind of find your own way to practice this Veloma exhale. Beginning again when you're ready, a slow, steady in breath all the way up the hill, out breath, pause, out breath, pause, out breath. Easy breathing. Maybe another one. You have to discern if the brain is staying quiet or if it's getting agitated, you wanna keep the brain really settled. Let's do one last attempt whenever you're ready. Coming back to your easy breathing. Coming into Shavasana. Today I have a poem by Mary Oliver called In Blackwater Woods. Look. The trees are turning their own bodies into pillars of light, are giving off the rich fragrance of cinnamon and fulfillment. The long tapers of cattails are bursting and floating away over the blue shoulders of the ponds. And every pond, no matter what its name is, is nameless now. Every year, everything I have ever learned in my lifetime leads back to this. The fires and the black river of loss, whose other side is salvation, whose meaning none of us will ever know. To live in this world, you must be able to do three things. To love what is mortal, to hold it against your bones, knowing your own life depends on it. And when the time comes to let it go, to let it go.
Let's take a deep cleansing breath all the way up the body and exhale all the way back out. And invite small, simple movement in through the fingers, toes, wrists, ankles, head, and neck. Bend your knees, bend your elbows, move your hands onto your belly, your chest. Gently ease yourself to one side. Make sure to support your head with your hands if you need. Maybe allowing your eyes to open here, but not because you have the desire to see anything. Keeping the brain and body passive and quiet. Gently take your hands to the floor by pressing down, bring yourself up. And then you find yourself seated back in Sukhasana. Take a moment to move your hands together in front of the heart center. Pull the shoulders back, lift the corners of the mouth. Point your gaze away from the brain toward the heart once again. And let's take an in-breath through the nose and let it go. From the place within me that I know to be divine, I honor that place within each of you. Namaste. Thanks everyone for being here. And I can't wait to see you again. Have a good weekend. <clears throat>